Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thanks for joining me. I'm Katie and today I'm doing one in the sketch pad. I thought I'd start sharing some more of my sketch pad work because this is where I do a lot of the experimental stuff and I think it kind of just gives you a bit of an insight as to sort of how I operate and whether I decide to turn something in a sketch pad into a bigger picture if this kind of thing interests you and you enjoy this and you're new here why not hit subscribe and make sure you don't miss any future videos and of course if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up right let's get cracking into it shall we so just to sort of bring you up to speed I'd already sketched this out and the reason I don't really sketch on camera is because I've got terrible posture with it if I'll be honest. If I'm leaning over my desk as well all the perspective goes a bit strange and especially so with the sketch pad it's a bit hard to sort of put it comfortably on a drawing board and then it's a whole world of pain trying to record that as well. I've only got a small workspace at the moment, so it, it's a little difficult. So I'd already pre-drawn this and aside from the blue paint I'm putting down, you may have noticed some areas had got blue in them and that was my masking fluid. And I've obviously used the masking fluid to make sure the white of the paper's preserved underneath. And to be fair, it's not a bad little device it's a new masking fluid pen my other one was sort of on its last legs so it, it's all good again and it doesn't congeal to the paper quite as much which makes me happy anyway from the painting side of things just to start off with i've used a wet on wet technique and i started on the background which is on the right hand side of the face and continued to use the same technique for the rest of the page in between the areas i don't want to add any color to and i haven't blocked off with masking fluid now let's talk about the character a little bit so i don't know why but i wanted to do character based on the moon and sort of all the beautiful things that maybe we don't see in the evening and if you're not a fan of moths maybe maybe you probably might disagree with me but I like moths I think they're quite nice I mean it's not great when one comes in your bathroom and you've just got out of the shower and the last thing you want it to do was land on you that's not good that's not good but you do see some rather fabulous moths, right? And of course, they all come out at night and their behaviour, aside from like electric lights and candles and anything else that's luminous at night, they kind of, they're kind of guided by the moon. So this seems just the right thing to do. And the flowers I've added in there, can't think for the life of me what they're called, but I did look them up and they're like your night blooming plants or the ones that sort of release the most fragrance at night to attract said moths I guess. Now I seem to be doing this a lot just lately but I wanted to add a muted tone to this. I didn't want it to be too melancholy and I think I've avoided that by just adding a few warmer colours and a few pops of colour here and there but obviously it's night time paints I decided to use for this as well are some Daniel Smith watercolours and some of them are what Arte Mystic had very kindly put together and sent to me and there was a little sale on Jackson's website and it was literally a few pence off per tube but I did treat myself just to four random colours just to try and very gradually expand my collection. I mean luckily this paint doesn't require much activation and I, I imagine these are going to last me a long long time but I really wanted to use them on here and some of them some of them are quite granulating and some of them I mean I'm, I'm no expert on this um, but some of them are made from other pigments as well and obviously the more you dilute them and the more, the more you let them settle the more them pigments break apart and just make a really nice effect if I could put any theme on my sketchbook that I'm currently working on, I'd say it was about texture. I really want to try and sort of 
wouldn't say master it, I'll never master anything, but just sort of get to a stage where I can confidently use some of these techniques where I'm experimenting. And that's what my sketch pads are usually all about. They're not, they're not some novel I'm wanting to publish or anything. They're just for me. And I don't mind making mistakes and that. I don't even mind showing my mistakes. I'm all human at the end of the day. But to get the most out of a sketch pad, I will throw as many different types of techniques as possible at them just to see if there's something I can pick up and use for future pieces. Now we all think of moths as being these dull, dowdy, butterfly impersonators you could say. But as I mentioned earlier in the video they're actually really beautiful and sometimes the top wings, because they've got four wings, the top ones They've, they're a bit more subtle, but the underwings, that's where you've got all these amazing flashes of colour. And yeah, I just I just think they're lovely. I think they're, they're very underrated insects. And I just love the variations as well. And again, I couldn't tell you what species these are. I just sort of got the old wildlife book off the shelf and had a look at moths and there were some in there. And I used them just for colour references and just shape references really even though i didn't draw the exact moth i kind of kind of figured it out really bit of practicing in a scrappy sketch pad you could say now i think adding these little pops of color everywhere maybe i could have balanced it out better but again it's all a learning experience right but i just think it completely breaks up how muted the colours are and it, it just sort of encourages the eye to flow across the page you could say and I really like how the moths will stand out a little bit more than the rest of the character and the flowers are a bit more subtle in the background I, I didn't want it all to be about the moths but I certainly I certainly didn't want them to blend in but let's talk about the flowers so I suppose really with it being the moon and night time, I was quite tempted to just sort of give her this wacky, crazy galaxy hair. And you could say I did that with the background, how I mix the colors and just swish them around. And I have left little circles where masking fluid, had, I'd put some masking fluid, just to sort of, I don't know, give little orbs of light. But I, I really wanted to steer away from it being about space and more about it being about the moon even though there's obviously no actual moon references I wanted it to be more about that and the flowers I guess you could say replace all of the stars in the galaxy so I think I think I've sort of created some nebulas there using star-shaped flowers rather than actual stars and I actually really like that and my flower drawing skills really really do leave a lot to be desired but i don't think i did a too bad of a job all in all though i'm really happy with how this turned out i think it's quite a nice page for my sketch pad let me know in the comments what you think of course if you've enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and i will see you on the next video that I do. I really hope you enjoyed this one guys. See you soon. Bye!